There was another period of time when things were falling apart and mere anarchy was loosed upon the world. It was just after the Revolutionary War when the 13 colonies were held together by the Articles of Confederation, which granted sovereignty to each individual state, for state, after all, also means nation. And yet, the war had incurred enormous debts to people in this land, merchants, soldiers, people of other nations who had supported the Revolutionary War. George Washington felt in 1780, our cause is lost. Our one head is gradually changing into 13. It was a hydra with no covenant together, with no sense of mutual responsibility. Democracy was still kind of a, a bad word. It wasn't really till de Tocqueville in 1830 ennobled the term. Before that, it kind of was a, a, a reference to mob rule. There was no financial structure. Capitalism was not yet a theory that people subscribed to. Here was a group of people who had come together with great ideals, a massive cause, had sacrificed time, talent, treasure, sacred honors, lives. And the question was, now what? Individual colonies guarded jealously their own identities, their own religions, their own cultures, their own understandings, their own geographies. It turned out that nicely asking each colony to contribute to the debt wasn't working. There was some three million that was needed. 39,433 was raised by voluntary contribution. Three ghosts hovered over the 13 colonies, in their conversations, slavery pitting North and Southern interests, representation pitting large and small populations, and the sense of union versus confederation. As Roger Sherman said in that period of time, my country, my country is Connecticut. The Continental Army was being sent away back home. George Washington said it was the most pitiful thing he had ever seen. People who had fought so nobly being sent away without clothing, a year in arrears in pension, without food, with no jobs to go back to, being considered by their localities as beggars. And so it was the army and the financial people who pushed, because of their lived and felt experience, for a coming together, for a unity that addressed those three ghosts. It made compromises. It fought hard through the summer of 17. 87. In fact, it appointed a committee on detail to write the Constitution. And it was in the committee on detail that one Governor Morris changed the original language from we the people of the states of, naming each one of the 13 colonies, in the most important edit that the United States has ever known, he simply wrote, we the people of the United States. He kept the S, states, 
and he added V United in front of it. Benjamin Franklin said, I consent to this Constitution because I expect no better, and I'm not sure that it's not the best. It sacrificed moral purity for a new unity, something that had never existed before, something that was not correct, but it was real. It was a framework in which the arguments could continue. Mere anarchy was not loosed upon the world. Things did not fall apart, although just about everyone felt that they were, and people went home from the Constitutional Convention completely unsatisfied with the resolutions in slavery and the continued ambiguity between national and states' rights, which we inherit to this day. The conversation must continue within a covenanted framework, within this, our beloved community, within our country, within a world at large struggling with its ghosts toward justice and healing and sustainability, as Drew Faust said, in the Harvard Divinity School review that one of our members, Dick Lesher, sent along to me. She's the president. She said, halting climate change, understanding and addressing inequality, extending and enhancing human life. Our human aspirations are matters of business, of law, of education, of engineering, of medicine, of religion. The list goes on. Deciding how to pursue them is vital, and yet understanding why we pursue them is indispensable. We build our houses in the spirit of worship to provide a home, to give ourselves a framework in which to continue the conversation. For our faith, is in the conversation. It will seem that things are falling apart, that the center cannot hold, but we will find a new center. We will find a new middle ground. We will find a new faith as we each listen deeply to our own conscience and to the voices of those who choose to speak deeply to us, with us, among us, in this, the continual co-creation of beloved community. <laughs>